Hey everyone, this is Scott here again with a new video to help you learn how to trade, invest, and master your finances so you can apply that knowledge in the real world and multiply your money. And in today's video, I'll be taking a deep dive into the call credit spread strategy. And so I'll be using my trading platform here to give you detailed explanations and examples so that by the end of this video, you'll be able to start using this strategy yourself. And if that sounds interesting to you, then please do me a favor and hit the like button on this video and subscribe to my channel. I would greatly appreciate it. Now, before we get started here, as always, if you would like to take some in-depth classes on options, options trading, and stock market investing, then please check out my courses on Skillshare. I've been teaching on that platform for well over a year at this point. And in case you aren't aware, Skillshare is a lot like YouTube, except the content on that platform is geared solely towards the purpose of education in the form of online classes. And in my classes, you will see a lot of the detailed research and analysis that I have done using real stock market data with spreadsheets, graphs, and even computer programs that I have written to help simulate and prove the concepts that I am teaching. And I've dropped some links to some of the more introductory courses of mine in the description of this video below. Now you will need a premium membership with the Skillshare platform if you do wanna watch my courses, but if you do sign up for that membership using the links provided in the description of this video, you'll get an absolutely free two week trial. And during that time, you can watch all my courses on Skillshare absolutely for free. And then once your trial is over, it will only cost you a few dollars a month to maintain your membership and you'll gain access to all the future courses that I have planned going forward in addition to all the other classes that are on Skillshare too. And if you decide it's not for you, no worries, you can cancel before your trial is over and you won't lose a dime. But again, if you are interested, then check out those links below and join the thousands of other students that have already taken my classes. And so with that being said, let's jump over to my trading platform now and get things started. All right, welcome to my trading platform here. And as usual, I have a chart pulled up and this time it's going to be a one year price action chart of IWM. And this is just an ETF that tracks the Russell 2000 index which is mostly comprised of smaller cap companies. And recently, basically ever since late October of 2020, this index and this ETF has just been skyrocketing. And so of course, there is no way of knowing when this huge up move will end, but given that this up move has continued for so long, it's certainly reasonable to at least in the short term be bearish on this particular index, right? Stocks don't typically just go up in a straight line in perpetuity. There's generally a lot of ups and downs along the way. And so if you are bearish on IWM like myself, for example, then using a call credit spread would be a great strategy to use to take advantage of my bearish bias, right? So the call credit spread is a bearish strategy. Ideally, we want the stock or the ETF that we're trading to go down in price. But just like all the option trading strategies that I use, specifically ones that involve selling options, you don't actually have to be directionally correct to still make money on the trade. So like I said, we want IWM to go down in price. That's how this strategy will make money the fastest. But even if I'm wrong and IWM continues going sideways or maybe even if it rallies up and goes a bit higher, I can still walk away with a full profit. And you'll see how that works here in a minute. So let's come over to the trade tab now and take a look at the option chain for IWM. And let's go into the April expiration cycle. These options here expire in 48 days. And generally speaking, when I am trading options, I prefer to choose expiration cycles with at least 30 days until expiration and a maximum of about 60 days. So anywhere between 30 and 60 is where I like to be. And so the call credit spread is going to consist of two pieces. And just as a side note here, if you have also seen my put credit spread video, you're going to notice a lot of similarities here with a call credit spread. And that's because they're basically identical strategies, except they're just the opposite of each other. Right, the put credit spread is using puts, as I'm sure you could tell by the name, and it's a bullish strategy, whereas the call credit spread is comprised of using call options, and it's a bearish strategy. And I'll post a card above linking to my put credit spread video in case you wanna watch that after this one. And so what we're gonna do here with these call options is I'm going to sell an out of the money call option, and then at the same time, I'm also going to purchase an even further out of the money call option. So for example, I might want to sell this option right here, this is the 230 strike call option. And looking at the bid and ask prices here, this option by itself is trading for about 455 bucks or so. And so like I said, at the same time that I'm going to sell this option, I'm also going to buy maybe this option right here. This is the 235 strike call option. So sell an out of the money call option and then also buy a further out of the money call option. Those are the two pieces that make up the call credit spread. And you'll also notice here, looking at the bid and ask spread for the 235 strike call option, the price of this option is much less than the 230 strike call. 
right? This option is trading for about 300 bucks. And so because we are going to sell an option that is worth more than the option we're buying, that means the net effect when doing this is we're still going to take in money when we put on this position. So for example, if I set up this order now, I'm going to right click on the 230 strike call option here and go to sell and then go to vertical. And that's because these credit spreads are also referred to as vertical spreads. So I'm going to sell a vertical here and that brings up the order, which you can see is comprised of two pieces. The first of which is we're going to sell one contract 230 strike call option. And then at the same time, we're also going to buy one contract and it's going to be a 230 five strike call option. So right here. And so now when you look at the credit here, you can see we're going to take in $157 for selling this call credit spread. And again, that's because the option we're selling, this 230 strike call is worth more than the option we're buying. And that just has to do with the nature of option pricing. Options that are further out of the money are always gonna be worth less than options that are closer to where the stock is actually trading. And so for some of you, this might be a bit unusual because I would assume a lot of people out there are used to buying options and buying stock, having to pay money initially to get into a position. But in this case, with these kinds of strategies, you actually take in money initially and then you pay money to get out of the position. And so that means, of course, the goal here is if we are taking in about 160 bucks for selling the spread, then eventually when you want to get out of this position, you want to pay less than what you took in initially. So for example, what I would typically do in this situation is sell this spread for about 160 and then buy it back when the price of this spread drops to about 80 or about 50% of the initial credit I sold it for. And so that would mean if I sold it for 160 and bought it back for 80, the difference there is 80 and that 80 bucks would be my profit. And so the main benefit that comes with these kinds of strategies, these credit spreads or any strategy that is comprised of credit spreads is that they have defined risk, meaning that even in the worst case, if IWM goes from 218, which is where it's currently trading at, to 1000 or infinity, in the worst possible case, you can only ever lose a specific finite amount of money that you already know and have control of up front before you actually make this trade. And so specifically for this trade right here, the most amount of money you could lose on this position would be $343, no more. And so let's think about why here for a minute. And I'm going to walk you through a few different scenarios and you'll see why this position here has defined risk. So let's start first with the best case scenario where we are correct in our directional assumption on IWM and the price of this ETF actually does continue to fall. And so if we assume we're just going to hold this position all the way until the expiration date, 48 days from today, then that means if IWM does continue to fall and by April 16th it is below 230, which is the strike price of the option we sold, as long as IWM is below this price by the expiration day, both of these options will still be out of the money, which means they'll both expire worthless and just disappear. And that would mean you would get to keep the full $157 you sold the spread for initially. So that's the best case scenario. What about the worst case scenario? Right now, let's say by the expiration date, IWM goes from 218 to 300, it has a massive, massive rally and blows through both of our strikes here, all the way to 300 bucks per share. So in this case, let's look first at this 230 strike call option. This is the one that we sold. And so if IWM ends up at 300 bucks per share by the expiration date, what is that going to mean for this option here? Well, if you think about a call option from the buyer's perspective, the person who bought this contract from us, a call option gives the buyer the right to purchase 100 shares at the strike price, right? And so if IWM is all the way at 300 by the expiration date, then the buyer of this option is going to want to use this option. They're going to essentially exercise this contract so they can buy 100 shares of IWM at a price of 230 so that they can then go sell them back in the market at the higher price of 300. And so who are they going to buy these shares from? Well, they're gonna buy the shares from the person who sold the contract. So whenever you sell a call option, you are obligated to sell 100 shares at the strike price if by the expiration date, the price of the stock or the ETF in this case is above the strike price. So in our example here, because IWM is well above the strike price at 300, then of course we're gonna have to sell 100 shares of IWM at a price of 230. But now don't forget, we also purchased a call option with a 235 strike. 
And since because we are the buyer of the contract in this case, we now have the right to buy 100 shares of IWM at a price of 235 bucks per share. So because of this position here, you will always be able to buy 100 shares of IWM at a price of 235 and then sell them at a price of 230. And that is completely regardless of how high IWM actually goes by the expiration date. Whether it goes to 300, to 400, to 1000, it does not matter. You will always have the ability to buy those shares at 235 and then sell them at 230. And so this would mean if we're buying 100 shares at 235 and then immediately turning around and selling them at a price of 230, this would be a loss of five bucks per share times the 100 shares we're dealing with. That's an overall loss of 500 bucks. And so the last piece of this now is to factor in the credit or the amount of money we took in initially for selling this spread in the first place, right? This amount of money you will always get to keep and you can use it either for your profit, right? Like in the best case scenario where IWM actually falls in price and you get to keep this full amount or you can also use it to help offset your losses. And so that means if we lose 500 bucks from trading the stock here or trading the ETF, but you also made 157 bucks from selling the spread, that means the net result is you only lose $343. That's where that number comes from. And like I said, that is also the absolute maximum amount of money you can lose. And that is the major advantage that comes with using these defined risk strategies. And then lastly, the final scenario here is what happens if IWM ends up in between our strikes by the expiration date. So in this case, we are directionally wrong. IWM continues to go higher, but at least we're not super wrong. And so let's say in this last case scenario, IWM rallies from 218 to let's say 232 bucks per share. So once again, coming back to our spread here and looking first at the option that we bought, the 235 strike call option, this option would still be out of the money by the expiration date. If IWM is only at 232, then this option is going to expire worthless and it just disappears. But this option here, the 230 strike, the one that we sold, is going to be in the money. And so just like in the worst case scenario, the buyer of this contract is going to use the contract. They're going to exercise it and you will have to sell 100 shares of IWM at a price of 230. And so in this case, you obviously don't have an option now that you can use to buy shares of IWM, right? Because this one will have expired worthless. But in this scenario, if the price of IWM is only 232, well, then you can just go in the market and just buy those shares yourself. You can just go buy 100 shares of IWM at the current market price of 232 bucks per share. And then once you've done that, you can now sell them to the option buyer at a price of 230. And then you will have honored your agreement when selling this contract. And so now if you bought shares at 232 and you sold them at 230, that's a loss of two bucks per share times 100 shares. That's an overall loss of 200 bucks. But again, if you took in initially 157 from selling the spread, that means the net result here is you only lose 43 bucks and that's it. So that's definitely not really a big deal. And lastly, before wrapping this video up, I do wanna talk briefly about the probabilities that are associated with these kinds of strategies. Specifically, these are very high probability of profit trades. And that's because, as I've said, as long as IWM stays below 230, by the expiration date, you will walk away with the full amount of profit here. And with the current price at 218, that means it could just go sideways, it could go down, which would be the ideal case, or it still could increase in price and you could be directionally wrong. It could still increase in price by almost 12 bucks and you would still make the full profit. And if you wanna get more exact about the chance that IWM actually does rally to and above 230 by the expiration date, you can see those probabilities right here, right? All these percentages here are the probabilities of the corresponding options being in the money. That's what ITM stands for. And so as of right now, the chance that this option here, the 230 strike call option becomes in the money by the expiration date, or the chance that IWM rallies to and above 230 by that time is only about 28.5%. And so if there's a 28.5% chance that the price of this ETF rallies to this point, that means there's a 71.5% chance it never does that. And that by the expiration date, IWM is still below 230. 
and therefore you get to keep the full 157 bucks of profit. So trading options in this way, specifically selling out of the money options, can give you a very, very high chance of making money on any given trade, over 70% in this case. And you also have complete control over those probabilities in addition to how much money you want to risk on this position. If you want an even higher chance of making money on this trade and you also want to risk less money, so in the worst case scenario you actually lose less than 343 bucks, well then what you can do is simply move the strikes. So for example, instead of selling the 230 strike call option, maybe we move even further out of the money and in this case now, we're going to sell the 235 strike option and then we're also going to buy the 238 strike call option. So now looking at the option chain here and highlighting the 235 strike call option, the chance that this option ends up in the money or the chance that IWM goes all the way to 235 by the expiration date is only about 21%. So now you have almost an 80% chance of making the full profit on this trade. And moreover, because the width of these strikes here is much more narrow, it's only $3 wide as opposed to $5 wide, the maximum loss in this case is going to be smaller. Now there is always a give and take with this kind of thing. You can't just have a higher chance of making money and also lower risk and still make the same amount of profit. So in this case, the credit you receive is only 72 bucks. So it's about half as before. But now the max loss in this case is only 228 bucks. So options give you a lot of flexibility in how you can construct your trades in terms of how you can take advantage of a specific directional assumption in addition to picking your chance or your probability of making a profit and also allowing you to specify how much risk or how much money you're willing to lose in the worst case scenario. And so I know we covered a lot in this video and I threw a lot of information at you. So of course, if you've got questions or if you need clarification on something, then please do post a comment on this video and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. All right, so that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it and let me know your thoughts about the call credit spread strategy or if you have questions about it in the comment section below. And don't forget, if you wanna take some in-depth classes on options, options trading, and stock market investing, then check out my Skillshare courses. Links in the description of this video. And lastly, if you enjoyed this video, then please give it a thumbs up, drop a comment, and subscribe to my YouTube channel. And make sure those notifications are turned on. I'll be dropping new videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, and you don't want to miss out. So thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time.